When I look at these beautiful children, what I see is an incredible opportunity for them to grow into having a good life. They feel capable, they can give back, they can contribute, they can participate, they can take care of themselves and their own. When they're dealt a script that blocks that opportunity out, a set of parents who can't deliver the care they need, the nurturing they need to grow up, a community that's indifferent at best, and at worst, discriminatory and cruel, they will not have a good life. I feel like the things that we wanted, we couldn't have, you know, so that was a little frustrating, but I just felt like, yeah, we just can't get it because my mom can't afford it, so we can't get it. And the only other way people was being stuck back then was by, like, taking it. Growing up, my dad had no father. You don't know who he is in your mind? I know my father. I know him very well. He ain't a Why you call him? Why you call him a coward? Because I say I witnessed him put his hands on females in front of me, and that's, that's not the flu, like, that's not where he's at. So, like, every day we would argue, fuss, of just about anything. My stepdad, like, he, he overdid it when he would spank me or whoop me. He would, he would, I was, like, in elementary school, going to school, like, limping, because I had, like, big, my leg would, like, turn purple from, like, the belt buckle, and, like, he would, like, smack me sometimes, and, you know, my mom had, she was diagnosed with schizophrenia, and, and some other stuff, and it's like, we was just like, wow, like, we was just out there. Like, them, it's lack of clothes, and lack of food, lack of how we take care of the place, you know, what we was sleeping on, like. You know your mother is now? How do you, how do you feel about your mother? I felt so that, that, that I felt so that my mother didn't care about me, and I also felt so that she she showed more love to the drugs than she showed me, and I felt so that um, she wasn't a good mother for real. How does that feel? Made me feel like um, what type of parent I had, had back then. It made me feel sad sometimes. I think about it, cause why would you choose a drug over your son? And so if they've been betrayed by the parent, if the parent has abandoned them, who protects them from the larger problem, the larger betrayal? Institutions that will not give them an education. The violence in the neighborhood, the drug dealing, the insensitivity, the guns, the guns, the guns. That's another level of betrayal. How much betrayal does a young human being take while they're absent? from getting the care they need. What happens to the child? I was standing on a basketball court one day, right? And um, people was like fighting over a basketball game. One of the guys on the other team, for real, had a gun and everything. He shot um, one of my mans, for real, you feel me? People get killed over anything, for real because he had like a white t-shirt, so uh, he was all bloody on the ground and all that. The guy had said, I ain't, I ain't here to rob y'all, bro. I'm just here to prove a point. I'm thinking like, what point are you trying to prove for real? In high school, that was a terrible school. I go in there and I had to like, police standing right there, metal detectors, they patting me down, asking for IDs that I ain't have, and going in pockets and all this stuff just, just to get into school. And it was like, even worse when you got in there. So like, I didn't even want to be there. I remember this to this day, I was like, I think I was like eight. I'm just walking with my mom and, and I look and I see a, a tenant, you know, black tenant car. And I see the window roll down and I see a gun come out the, come out the car or whatever. 
and I hear, and I see the shooting, I see shooting style going on, and I see, you know, as he's shooting, like three of them get hit, and like one of them heard him running the building. And as, as that's going on, my mom, like, crying. My mom crying and all that, and she trying to, like, tell me to get down, like, tell me to get down and stuff like that. And she crying. I was in the streets. At 11 years old, I got shot three times for taking people off. Because he, he basically tried to kill you, right? Like, yeah, yeah I woke up to the gun in my face. I think they become courageous survivors. They develop a moral code that we've taught them for my own indifference. It's, it's called get them before they get you. Trust no one. Figure it out. You're all you have. How powerful is that? At seven, I've seen them already with the lights out. I'm thinking that my dad was still alive because nobody had told me that he died at 5 o'clock in the morning. Like, we, we were just walking around the hospital talking about, like, memories that we had and plans and goals that we had in life. I just had this, this gap of anger towards I don't know who. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's my mom. I don't know who it is, but ever since my dad left, it's just been... Hell. Or well, some people ain't had parents or a father to tell them what to do or the correct thing to do. Me growing up, I didn't always have a father. My mother was my father, so I was in the streets having. Most of my friends right now dying with all locked up, getting locked up. It's just that, like, I wanted to fit in for real with everybody. Like, I was, like, basically like a follower and everything. And, um,. Now that I, I could look back on all the things that I did, now that I think that I shouldn't do none of that stuff, like some of the stuff I, I did, I regret it. When you got to worry about people getting shot here and you don't want to get shot, that makes you go get a gun. And that's when this whole, I, I get a gun, I, he trying to rob me. And that's why black on black, you know, shooting because a person trying to rob you, so you want to defend yourself. So this, yeah, that's why it's a, that's why it's a war, a war against our sales. It's a lot of intelligent people in, in the hood, but it's like they just don't have no opportunity or they don't have no way out. The good news, the good news, children can recover from trauma. Young people can heal from trauma. And the good news is it takes a community to ensure that that happens. A community that cares enough to make certain it happens because it happens all the time. And they move beyond survival to a quality of living to a good life. It happens all the time, but not often enough. So many people wonder why like young black men are so angry. When you get treated like that, that builds anger. And when you, you know, you out doing this in the street, doing that, people don't see that. So we, we just really showing out the anger that we really have and the emotion that we have when we put on the video. I think that like, um, all the stuff I had been through and experience, I truly think that like, like God, like really got a plan for me, a better plan for me. Cause all these 19 years, I'm stressing and being doing all this. Probably like, probably like in the next 19 years, it'll be the opposite way. That's my ID, like my first school ID ever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm proud of it. It's my first high school ID ever. Well, like the, the program basically um, for you to, um, how you like to start on your own. When you first get there, you got to um, go to school, get your job, and just like provide for yourself for real. They provide like lower programs for you to like get back on your feet for real. And they teach you how to live independently. It feels more like a home than a, a facility. It feels good, I mean, to feel like somebody cares about you. You know, a lot of 
people in my situation just want an opportunity to succeed in life. You know, just give us those opportunities and then we can blossom into something much bigger than we already is. We want to build a community that taps into the belief that there's something bigger than what's happened to me. I am something more than what's happened to me. I am intrinsically valuable. They showed me the light at the end of the tunnel. It was always there, but I just, I was, I never wanted to see it. Like, they give me more hope. Just build those bridges for those, the ones that do want to come across and want to sit there and learn and do something. I won't be staying in this place for a while, for real, so I'm gonna do now, for real. I'm gonna just say goodbye, so I'm done. So try to get that opportunity. Don't miss your blessing and you will one day be okay and forgive him.